Good. Um, also for your knowledge, please edit your name to write SOW in front of your name. Um, so we know which breakout room you would like to go. We have planned some breakout room towards the end of this session. So with that, welcome to week 13. Today, we will be talking about personal ecology and self-care. And in preparation of this, this session, we also identified this is also Mental Health Awareness Week. So we've added some element of that. Today, we will be using Slido. So I will ask you for a minute if you have a phone in hand or if you can open a browser and use slide.do Slido, and enter the number 2607310. Maya will add that in the chat for you too. Awesome. So I want to just start by setting some terminology in place. So mental health, what does that mean? It's a state of mental well-being that enables us to cope with the stresses of life, realize our abilities, learn well and work well, and contribute to our community. So there's a lot of uh, combination how, of how we take care of ourselves in the work that we do. In this session, we have also emphasized a lot of community work because a lot of you are leading teams and communities, and that's the context we uh, collaborate in. But of course, these applies to your own personal life as well. The second point about self-care. So what does self-care mean in the context of mental health? It is what we do to take care of ourselves so we can lead a healthy personal life and contribute to the work that inspires and fulfills us. And the last one is about personal ecology. This might be probably you heard this before, but not enough in the context of mental health and self-care. We talk about personal ecology uh, in terms of maintaining, balancing, pacing uh, in a way that is sustaining our energy over a prolonged time. So we often get this boost of a blast of motivation and inspiration, and we might do a lot, but our energy will drop and we might not be able to continue working in that same capacity. So how do we plan for our own ways of working, own ways of living, so our energy is sustained for a prolonged time so we can continue to do what fulfills us? Okay. The reason we included personal ecology as part of our cohort discussion is because we are talking a lot about community building, leading our team, doing uh, participating in open science movement. There's a lot of activism that is involved. There's a lot of emotional energy that we bring into, into this space. And it can often make us work more than we are, we should, or we have time for, or we, should, we want to, because there's so much self-reliability in the work around open science communities. And it can often burn us out. Burnout is, uh, is characterized in the context of occupational context. For example, with th that feeling of energy depletion or exhaustion, increased mental distance or feeling of negativism related to job or reduced professional eff efficacy, which happens often due to the consequence of stress. So of course, these are not confined to our jobs, they also affect our personal lives if we don't address them. So personal ecology requires that we plan for ourselves and then our team and community in a way that is proactive, strategic, systemic, um, so that we can sustain our energy again. So personal ecology has been defined a lot by Akaya Windwood. You can find a lot of written work by Akai Winwood, who is a community builder, but ground up in social sciences context. Um, and she talks about personal ecology as a way to work with others. Often people say that taking care of myself may sound very selfish, but her point around personal ecology is that I want to be well, so you are well. So we both can work together in this space. This is a lot about not just taking care of yourself for your own selfishness. It's really about being well so other people around you are also feeling taken care of. The personal ecology plan for yourself and community also requires that you ensure your own well-being and availability for yourself, those you care for, and then for your work. 
In this context, I also want to mention boundary. Um, we, we often talk about that we need to build this boundary between what is our work, what is our personal life, and often we let that seep into each other. And that's okay, because we come as the whole person, meaning that we can't really avoid being ourselves at work. And maybe if we are experiencing stress at home, or if you have someone sick you're taking care of, or you have a child with a lot of energy, or you're, you're a new parent, there's a lot of different reasons why those, in, those things are unavoidable, that they will affect your life anyway. Um, so we think about boundary in terms of understanding for yourself and communicating with other what you will do to keep yourself safe and healthy when you will say no to and what you will say no to both personally and professionally this means thinking about you know what are my personal goals for instance at this point in my career what am i going to say yes to so that they are all aligned what i'm going to say no to because they would require me to put extra energy that i don't really have um, and therefore, this whole point around being proactive, strategic, and systemic, so it really affects you overall. So with that, I'll pass it to Maya. Hey, <clears throat> thanks, Malika. So, um, yeah, I guess I link to boundaries. Um, because sometimes, you know, we hear like you have to have boundaries between like you and other people or um, boundaries like with your parents, uh, like you, everyone should separate from them and so on and so forth. But I, I'd like, I, it was like this morning taking, you know, where, when did the boundaries appear, no, in general, in our, in our language. And it's like what Wikipedia said, it's, uh, Maya, can you turn off your video? Maybe your internet works. I'm gonna stop for a minute. Oops, Maya has been having Okay, thanks. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so I've been, I uh, guess, I don't know when, when you lost me, but I was checking when the expression of, um, of personal boundaries appeared. And it seems that in Western culture, it appeared around 80s uh, and was popularized by self-help books or, or coaches and then psychologists too. And um i'd like also you know to to remind you that even the burnout term was coined in 70s but also became like popular in the public discourse in the recent couple of years also related to the to the covid pandemics and all the changes we are experiencing with them with the shift so there are many ideas or concepts that were not there forever that they may be relatively very new in the history of human culture and they are socially constructed by each of us and also it applies to our cultural identities what makes us um, our race our gender and importantly all of our abilities they also get developed and constructed over time in relation to what is our uh, current historical social and political context And um, that's why, I mean, um, we'd like you maybe to share with us um, what is mental health for you in your own words, uh, not, not trying to remember the definition by the WHO. And also we'd like you to invite to share how this concept would sound for you in your native language, because I know many of you are not from um, native English language. Can you please um, share in the in the chat if you are able to open Slido, if it works? Mm 
Uh, more and more people are joining us. That's nice. Yeah, if um, you could open the slide on Slido, I'll also try to do it um, myself because I'm just a, a participant as you. And the code is, uh, so you open the slido.com and enter the code 2607381. Oh, thank you, Malvika. For making sure the slides. You can add multiple uh, responses, by the way. Um, salud mental. Be well, be active, um, feeling okay to tackle everyday life. I'm not sure German has a separate term for it, but it's widely used. Um, they might just go with Denglish and use mental health too. Mm -hmm. I really like this response on more than individual responsibility. We live in a structure that can enable us to be healthy. I, I definitely heard this in a podcast where Esther Perel was talking about how we have recently individualized burnout and mental health rather than trying to change the structure that is responsible to keep us all healthy, which is exactly this. And I really love that reminder. Yeah, so I, if I could, I would also put plus hundreds on that. Um, it doesn't look like we are getting new responses. Also, if um, if you would like to add in the chat, uh, feel free to do that. Um, I'll try to, to share the screen again. Um, And here we offer you the second question on um, what do you think stops, stops people um, from talking about their mental health or well-being and also from asking for support in regards with their, with their problem that can be mental health related. Let's take maybe a moment to reflect on that. Remember that this kind of what can be located also outside of people. Malvika, I think um, the results are not showing for my um, presentation. Maybe would it be possible for you to share? Yes, I can share. Yeah, yeah it's a... Um... Hmm. 
Thank you, Alvika. Yeah, we are getting a lot of um, responses starting from stigma, uh, not knowing where to go, um, not knowing about it, feeling ashamed about not coping, the social pressure to conform. We can only see others' external face and feel that any struggles are ours alone. Yeah, the, the isolation, no, that is um, spread out in the society sometimes. Um, shame and social stigma. And long wait list to get help or too expensive. That's absolutely true in, I guess, most of the countries. Um, I feel very relieved that um, all of the barriers and obstacles are put outside of people and that there is like no one saying it's, yeah, it's, it's a personal failure um, of the person, but it's what maybe comes um, sometimes behind no we're thinking. I think we associate mental health problems with personal failure and we feel ashamed for not being able to solve it ourselves. Yeah, thank you for adding this, um, this thought. Thanks, Malvika. Um, yeah, one, one, one thing is, you know, um, uh, when we have a problem, it's, it's, it tends to take um, control over almost all parts of our lives. And it, it tends to have a lot of influence our life and in, in various ways. And exactly, um, one of the, of the expression or mantra uh, of narrative therapy is um, separation of problem from the person, saying that the problem is the problem. And the person is not the problem. Person is the person. And the, in that way, um, we put the problem uh, outside of people, externalize it instead of being internalized, instead of um, making it an um, immutable, uh, unchangeable part of our identity. And especially because you all mentioned before, structural problems or or cultural uh, that do not depend on us sometimes, you know, related to justice, for example, or um, lack of social security. Um, this is really important to remember um, when we think about uh, our problem and how we want actually to overcome it. <coughs> um, and if we speak about like our lives in terms of stories, um, in conversation, sometimes people really, um, if when they're having a problem in the moment, then they receive all their life story from the position of this problem. And it kind of creates, um, I don't know if you can imagine as a, as a book, uh, it would be a one type of books. And it's really can be challenging to remember that life of a person is, contains much more stories around around other their skills, around their competences, around the values, beliefs, hopes, and abilities that they have. And the goal is to remember them, the diversity of stories, diversity of possible journeys that the person can take. And um, to, and it, sorry. <clears throat> and it's important, yeah, to, to find ways to come back to the ability to write their own preferred story. And in, again, in, in this approach, um, in narrative therapy that I'm currently studying, um, like people are helped to, to, to remember about their skills in a way that they can help to change the relationship with a problem in their life. And we will um, invite you now for another question to reflect upon. If you open the slide door, again. Mm 
Okay, I've started it in the slider. Hi, thank you, Valdrika. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, just try to remember the time, the moment in your life when you did have a problem, but then you overcame the influence of it on your life. You can maybe imagine that, you know, you took the driving seat um, in the car instead of the problem. Um, and I'm inviting you to think, like, how did it happen? Um, and I invite you to think, first of all, about yourself, about which strengths or abilities or, or values that you, you wanted to defend in that moment that, that helped you. Or maybe there were some important people in in your life that were um, were you helping or empowering you in this. Take a couple of moments. Hello to those who are joining. Um, we are having a silent reflection on, on the question that you can see on the screen uh, about the moment in your life when we were able to overcome the, the influence of the problem. And if you want, you can add your comment in the chat or in the, we're using slido.com. Um, if you can open another tab or, a, or your cell phone, you can add the code that is in the chat and add your. Oh, there are already some nice answers coming up. So people mentioned perseverance, um, willingness to finish what I started, responsibility as a factor that helped to, to overcome the problem. Or another interesting answer, like talking to many people to understand the problem in more detail. Mm -hmm. Investigated, no? or maybe to that I wasn't the problem in the situation. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly separating the problem and uh, the person and talking to people about the ways to react it. I'm pretty stubborn on things. So once I identified one solution, I was fine sticking to it. 
Thank you, thank you for sharing this. If, if anyone like wants to maybe comment as well on others, uh, you, so maybe we can take a couple of minutes for that. This meeting is being recorded. And um, for those who are watching this uh, recording, we are inviting uh, participants for a moment of self-reflection on what actions um, have you taken or can take to empower and sustain your well-being. And that might involve removing something or doing less of something or doing more. Of course, it might be not under your control like um, being in situations of power disbalance or discrimination. And also uh, your personal uh, list might also have some items that do not fit the, the traditional or you know, dominant prescriptions for self-care. And it would be very curious uh, to remember them and put them down on paper. Um, there is no need to share this with us if you would like to keep your notes private, but it would be um, curious to have uh, and useful to have some feedback on how it was for you to write uh, this list down, how it made you feel, um, if something surprised you or if you, if you remembered something you forgot about. So a couple of minutes for that. Okay. Um, we are moving closer. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, so, um, for those who are watching, we are um, moving to the closing part of this call. Um, in, and we've been talking about ways, uh, reflecting on the ways to take uh, control and develop our sense of agency through reflection, through questions, um, and mentioning various actions we can do as a part of, of self care on a larger uh, caring of others or addressing structural issues. And uh, this slide just shows some examples of, of the ways you can do that. Um, we provided um, some prompts to reflect on your personal ways to do this and, and share with others and learn from others. And um, Open Life Science provides you as a part of this curriculum many toolkits which have prompts and guides for self-assessment of habits uh, related to personal ecology, working style, and personal plans to draw inspiration from. You can find the link to the, to the handout in the etherpad. And um, on purpose, there are many different exercises. So don't feel obliged, you have to do them all. Uh, feel free more like taking as a taster, as a buffet where you can choose what works for you. And for example, um, this slide shows you one of the exercise looking at work-life quadrants uh, in which you can explore um, ways to, to empower yourself while maintaining boundaries between work and home uh, to prevent burnout. Um, you can find uh, links uh, then in the pad, uh, then we have some series of prompts um, that guide self-reflections, um, linking your responses to, to assess your state of balance and um, inviting to see opportunities to do things more or less. And just a couple of other uh, slides um, uh, showing these exercises. For example, a funny way to reflect on delights and distractions and find ways to, to have a more delightful or engaging remote uh, workplace um, that doesn't distract you. Uh, because many of us still work uh, remotely or, for example, 
we participate in this program, a community of practice remotely. Um, example can be a list uh, your favorite songs, books, movies, locations, food as delights, and put in a in a frame in a box all the distractions. I don't know clutter, feeling out of place, isolation. Um, without you know thinking too deeply that you have to address them all now, but just having them there in the in the frame is. It can be really helpful. And another exercise that the handout um, suggests is to, to identify and learn how to communicate your working style. Again, by using this useful, um, maybe for you useful, um, maybe it's not working, um, framework, um, listing strengths, challenges, communication styles, and things that help me. And um, it might take some time to uh, some versions to get to the version you you would like. And now there's exercises to compare and contrast. Um, kind of imagine what would be your desired preferred state of personal ecology and you know current one. You can even think you know in terms of giving it a number um, and then think um, what could be small steps that can improve your personal ecology uh, status or plan, I don't know, one point, or like you cannot change it, not immediately, but you can set the guidelines that would help you to have the journey starting. And final closing thoughts. Um, I know we're really short on time, but if is there anything you'd like to share with the group, uh, um, you feel free to do it in the chat or later in, in, in messages. And I'd like to invite you to leave this call with, you know, thinking about one, one small step that you can do today or right now to take care of sustaining yourself. Really one small one, you know, can be as simple as, you know, drinking water or calling a friend or taking a deep breath. And think of, if it works for you, of finding a body for accountability, which can support you in taking steps further. And again, uh, it can be even a body with whom you could share what you learned uh, today and maybe asking for, um, you know, what their resonance is and something else. And here we come to, to the end uh, of the presentation I'm stopping to share and um, stopping the recording so we can have a final chat and bye to those who is watching.